before I get started, <clears throat> I don't remember how much I have told the doctors on these case history webinars um, because I was, I've just been to too many places talking too much, so I forget who I told what to. <clears throat> but we had a pretty interesting um, things happen. Uh, it was about two months ago. I, well, let, let's not say that. We talked about last week, I think, that the governor of West Virginia <clears throat> signed a bill now making it uh, mandatory before a medical doctor in West Virginia writes a script for opioids. He has to refer, he or she has to refer to uh, a chiropractor or a PT first. And also that all insurance companies in West Virginia doing business there have to provide at least 20 chiropractic treatments a year. So that's like a monumental event <clears throat> that they would have the courage to do this. So using that, I uh, wrote a letter to the editor about a week ago, and it was published Saturday morning in our paper. Plus, we sent it out to many other papers in New York State. And it basically said, you know, the same thing. The governor of West Virginia signed this bill. <clears throat> Medical docs have to refer to chiropractors and PTs. Insurance companies have to cover 20 chiropractic visits a year. I said approximately two months ago, I met with Senator George Amador, who happens to be the co-chair of the opioid task force in the state of New York. And I wanted him to introduce a bill that would make it mandatory for every middle school and high school athlete in the state of New York to get a biomechanical exam in addition to their medical exam. I said, although eyes, ears, nose, and throat are important, there are no tests performed on our young students uh, that address musculoskeletal issues, uh, and we have to hopefully get some politicians who do have the vision so that New York State isn't the last state to also come on board in addressing this crisis. We have to educate the public that they need to start to go to doctors who understand musculoskeletal and not just to doctors who write prescriptions for the relief of symptoms without ever addressing the problem. Well, today it was interesting. I got a phone call from Senator George Amador. <laughs> and I wanted to just start off by letting you know that. It's always wonderful when you can wake people up because I'm sure I could call his office a hundred times and never get a phone call back. Now, I haven't had the chance to return the phone call, but I'm kind of anxious to see what he has to say. Uh, but I will certainly keep you posted next week uh, when we do find out what he has to say. In the process, when I had the letter to the editor, a very good friend of mine who's a photographer for the newspaper that it was published in, he sent me a cartoon, and it's actually kind of funny. You see the guy sitting on the table. So as you drove past three young women in bikinis, you heard a loud pop in your neck and haven't been able to move your head since, which is very funny. <laughs> so that I wanted to show you this cartoon, but I had to give you the background to it. And the photographer said, when my son played sports in high school, I understand what you're saying. I am behind you 100%. So I kind of hope that that's the overall feel and we're we're hoping to get a lot of momentum uh, with this type of a, a response or this type of a, a message that we're sending out there. But as I said, I'll keep you keep you abreast of all of it. Now, three keys to future success in musculoskeletal. Let me explain before I read this. We had a patient come in yesterday who begged his orthopedist for uh, painkillers, and his orthopedist said, "No, I will not write them." You can try physical therapy or I'll give you a shot. Well, he'd been a patient of mine in the past and he came in and I told him, you have to fix the problem if you care about having a better life. <clears throat> and he started his four-month decompression treatment program, which we say 48 is the magic number. But what I realized is as the pressure is put on the medical community, we are going to start getting more and more people coming in. So what you need to do is you need to be equipped to make them understand that you are the super specialist. So you have to have a digital foot scanner, and this is just mandatory in my opinion. If you're going to be dealing with musculoskeletal, we know that approach over there isn't right, so we have to have something different over here. It cannot be just the adjustment. It has to be the evaluation has to make you who you are. 
your adjustment then becomes part of the solution, but you have to evaluate. So you have to have a digital scanner, you have to have x-ray or digital x-ray center, and you have to have a relationship with an MRI center. Now, <clears throat> I had another new patient yesterday, 48-year-old woman, and she came in complaining of back pain, pain radiating down the leg. She's had it for months and months. It's getting worse. She's been to six chiropractors. And she told me this after I told her what we have to do. I said, what we have to do is we have to take x-rays of your back and your neck. We have to do a digital foot scan to see what your feet are doing. And then we're going to have to get an MRI. And she said, I've been to six chiropractors. They never mention one of those things. I'm looking for someone who can do what you just said. Why aren't they doing it? So I'm as shocked as she is. Why aren't we doing it? It is what the public needs and what they're looking for. And when you start doing it, you're going to get more patients coming in to help pay for it. So you almost have to jump off the cliff, you know, to, to figure out how to, to learn how to land. But I'm telling you, success is a formula. And if you do it, you will succeed. We know step by step how docs need to do it. So we've got two cases today that are going to show you uh, exactly what I'm referring to. Now, if there are any docs on board who say, how am I going to pay for an x-ray? Here's how. With the Atlas operating system, our goal is to scan every patient. If you scan every patient and if you use our criteria, who do I recommend them to? At what point do I recommend orthotics? You will begin selling orthotics. And if you begin selling orthotics, you will increase your cash flow in your office. That's how you start this whole process to be able to afford the other technologies. So <clears throat> for our high school kids, we sell for 270 so the profit is 120 One pair a week is 516 For adults, one pair a week is 860 a month. Four pairs a week, 120 is $2,000. Four pairs a week for adults is $3,400. Now, in our office, we do approximately 40 pairs a month, which is 9.3 pairs a week. So if it were just to kids, there's $4,800 profits. To adults, almost $8,000 profit. So you have to start becoming the doctor who does the right protocols. And if you have your digital scanner, if you're scanning every patient, recommending appropriately, there's no reason you shouldn't be immediately in the four pairs a week building to five, six, seven, and that's how you're going to afford your technology. So we had a young girl <clears throat> come in, and I've given this case as a case history before, but I'm combining it with another case because uh, they are both traumatic disc injuries. So about six weeks ago, seven weeks ago, she slipped on ice at college, landed hard on her back, went to the ER at the medical center, now a sophomore in college, they did no x-rays. They said, well, there's probably no breaks, which I think is ludicrous. They did blood tests and urinalysis to rule out kidney stones. She had pain in her entire left leg, <clears throat> inability to get on, um, what I have, ankle heel walk, okay. A weakness on toe heel walk. She couldn't get on her toe, couldn't get on her heel. So. Mag's law, when the loading of a tissue exceeds the capacity of that tissue, compensatory physiological changes occur, and the new addendum, biomechanical faults cause excessive loading. So we have to drive home this message with all patients. So now she had some severe symptoms. She was going back to school the next day, but I said she has the ability to stand on both legs. I'm going to get as much information while she's here as I can. So I elected to go the non-acute route where I could go do the structural fingerprint exam. So here's her scan. And again, for those who are maybe new to this, uh, if her feet do not look like the optimal feet, we are then going to recommend orthotics. And you can see hers don't, but they also are different in the appearance of how they've collapsed. You can see the R in the upper right-hand corner of the blue foot and come down to the blue vertical lines, the collective arches of the right foot have collapsed more than the collective arches of the left foot. So therefore, we have to start with orthotics. If we look at the red boxes, she has 61% body weight on the right, 38% on the left. 
That's about as much as I've ever seen. Now, I don't know if she's favoring um, <clears throat> anything going on in her low back, but that's extreme. So we know that there's a lot of problems rising above. And we have Crooked Man, and we look at her knees, and her knees have good alignment. We look at her low back, and you can see that she has a 3.6 millimeter <clears throat> elevation of the right femoral head. She has a uh, normal, basically a normal lateral. And then we look at her neck. She's got an anterior cervical gravity line, straight cervical spine, pretty good atlas axis, a little rotation on the uh, axis. So therefore, she's got some issues going on, but is that enough to cause it? Well, the fact that she had the uh, toe walk, heel walk inability, I said to her mother and her, you have to get an MRI. Now, if you remember, I said you have to have a relationship with an MRI facility. Her insurance wouldn't allow one for six weeks. So I said, you have to get an MRI. You cannot go back to school without getting an MRI. She <clears throat> this was 10.30 in the morning. She went over to the MRI at 2 o'clock. I had the report at 4.30, and uh, the imaging was done. I, and then I gave the phone report to the patient and the mother at 5 p.m. And you can see at L, between L4 and L5, go posterior, she's got a severe disc extrusion of L4, and she has a disc protrusion of L5. And here we can see the uh, T1 version of it. So I talked to them with regard to what their options are and what they elected was to Saturday go see an orthopedic surgeon. And she was operated on the following Thursday with great success. And the mother called me about a week after that and could not thank me enough for finding out what the problem was and steering them correctly. So again, it doesn't have to be that your, your hands or your office heals their injury. It has to be that you help them diagnose the condition and get them to the right place if you're looking to build a practice and build a reputation. Now, <clears throat> here is the second case, and this is about as alarming as any case I've ever seen. Injured his back two and a half years ago, severe antalgia, must live with his head in a flexed position, He's never been examined or x-rayed, and because he's worse in the past two weeks, he's now coming into our office. <clears throat> so I stopped him, and I said, let me take your picture. So he is almost erect in this picture relative to what he normally looks like. So what he normally looks like, he's further laterally flexed to the right, and his head is looking at the floor to take the pain. So... My associate, my young associate, I was at a training center in uh, Chicago when he came in. So my young associate, associate lasered him and didn't x-ray him. And he only adjusted his neck. And I said, why did you adjust his neck? And he said, I wanted to see how he responded to that. I said, you can't let this poor guy be a research study. You've got to treat the whole guy because he's got a lot of spasm and nerve irritation and the like. So anyways. The difference was I wouldn't have laid a finger on him without x-ray, excuse me, without x-raying him. He, I think, was a little unsure of what to do. So here is his x-ray. Start out by looking at the obturators. <clears throat> and if you've looked at enough x-rays, you know that uh, pelvis is in a severe flexion position uh, with that x-ray. If you look at the symphysis pubes, how they're not lined up with the gluteal crease by any means, you look at the width of the ilium, he's just got a massive lateral rotation in his pelvis. And then you can see the antalgia, the severe scoliotic uh, curvature. And if you look on the left um, disc spaces, you can only imagine that there is likely severe disc injury uh, in, in the left posterior region. So because what happened was he used to be a uh, perfectly normal posture, but in the last two and a half years, he's been forced to assume this posture. And again, it's my belief he, he has had to assume it because of the severe disc injuries that he's had. So here is his lateral lumbar. And again, I, I haven't seen many kyphotic lumbar spines, but I know that he probably has an issue. So here's another interesting part of this case. 
I send so many MRIs to this facility and we do it out of pocket for $300. He has no insurance. So I call them and I, or I ask this patient first, I need an MRI. You need an MRI. It'll cost you $300. He said, I'm not working. I don't have it. I said, okay, but you need an MRI. And again, I, I just stress to the, the docs out there, do not let a person leave without figuring out a way to get the job done. So I called the MRI facility and I said, look, it, do me a favor, do it for free. And the uh, manager said, I can't make that decision. And she said, let me call the people in charge. I'll get back to you. So now this poor guy's sitting in my office. Ten minutes goes by. And I said, I don't have the tolerance. So I called her back. I said, listen, I don't want to put you in a position. I'm going to send a check over with him. He'll pay me back whenever he gets the money. He needs an MRI today. So she said, okay, send him over. So I began giving him a check. And the you know, owner of the facility called and said, absolutely not. We're happy to do it at no cost. So if you're a good customer of an MRI facility, you have that latitude to um, have them do it for free, which again was just tremendous because I, we, we all felt so bad for this poor guy sitting in our office. He was the nicest young man. So they said they would do it for free. So here you have it. You can see it L4 again, a major extrusion, which has forced his body to get into this very uh, distorted uh, posture that is, is almost his normal posture now. So I said to him, listen, th this, I believe, would I would start with the surgical consideration. So you don't have any insurance. Let me call the surgeons, the orthopods, find out what happens. So I called them and they said, well, it's $100 out of pocket for the first consult, but then uh, if he, whatever he needs, we can set him up on a payment program. So I had already gone online to look at their offices and they uh, were really promoting the fact that they take walk-ins. <clears throat> so I gave him a copy of his x-rays. I, I had Dr. Yoakum's report he, he had gotten it back to us immediately. I gave him a copy of his MRI, and I told him, go. I gave him directions to the orthopods office. I said, go sit in the waiting room and become their problem. And if it doesn't work, call me back. So that was last week. I haven't heard back from him yet. But in the end, the, the moral of the story is have the digital foot scanner, have digital x-ray or access to digital x-ray and have an MRI facility who will work with you and then don't stop until you get the results. This girl wanted to go back to school. And if I said to her, if you go back to school, you're going to be in the middle of the ocean. You're going to have nobody looking out for you and you've got a major problem. This guy had no money, but we figured a way to make both of them work and both of my hope are closer to getting back to normal. And I believe that's what our job is. So there it is, Stephen, a little different one this week, but I think a, a real good message. Wow. Wow. That, that's the, those are the comments slash questions that came in really throughout, throughout the whole thing. Wows and wows and wows. Um, and then <laughs> Dr. Elizabeth, she, she's, she's been your cheerleader on the other end out there. Um, I did have one, I think it's a question doc, it's just out of my scope of understanding, uh, says transitional segment L5 on left. And then there's a question mark. Yes. In fact, Dr. Yoakum went so far as to say he only had four <clears throat> lumbar x-rays or lumbar vertebrae. So... I don't know if I fully agree with that. When I see him, I want to talk to him about it. But yes, transitional segment on the left. All right. Wow. Well, I hope that you hear back from that young man. And is that that first? Those are really, really good examples. I think one of the one of the um, one of the ones that get you know the answer always isn't in your office. The final, the final, I guess, outcome isn't there but if you didn't have the tools to get the questions and get the info you needed then they would i guess go to chiropractor number seven i guess yeah and here's the thing Stephen. we were in michigan this past weekend for the michigan um 
uh, Chiropractic Association, and we had about 250 docs in our one meeting. And, and the thing I told them, which is I say at every training center and seminar, we have to become more similar. And as long as we let the adjustment be our primary tool, we will never be similar. But if we let the Atlas operating system in the structural fingerprint exam and the x-ray and the MRI be our consistent uh, product that we do in every office and then how you deal with that you can use whatever technique or therapy that you want but let the exam and the imaging be consistent we will become the profession of the future there's not a doubt in my mind well it seems to be bearing itself out that you know if if the docs will, you know, if the MDD or whoever it is, kind of like the governor over there, the saying, you know, we're just we're not going to just prescribe uh, pain meds just because you say you're you're in pain. That's just not that's just not going to happen. Well, it, um, it, it, we can see it's coming to fruition. Everything that we've talked about. So I think we need to really sharpen our axe in our profession so that we can be the preferred providers when they start coming. Yeah. Um, Dr. Elizabeth did ask one question, though, uh, and, I, and I'm not sure how to, how to answer it, Dr. Maggs. It's um, with your MI, MRI facility being not too, too far away, do you have any kind of advice for ones that there's just nobody nearby? That's a hard one. We have we have docs two two hours away from the facility here that now those docs use this facility. People will drive two hours to save eight hundred dollars. Well, and maybe that's it. Maybe that. Yeah, maybe you have to find one. one. Got to find yeah, one if you don't have time. an MRI, if you don't have an MRI facility within two hours, you really have to be living on an island. <laughs> <laughs> because they're they're everywhere, <laughs> and keep asking until you get it for three hundred dollars. Don't pay more than that. Uh, okay, one last question here, and I'll I'll turn everybody loose. They keep popping up, which is great, which is great. Uh, if a patient is acutely antalgic as opposed to chronically antalgic, would you still X-ray initially? Absolutely, because <clears throat> the antalgia. And that's what during this, through our Atlas operating system, we talk about imaging, always image the involved area. It can be due to so many things. And I want to be able to tell that patient right away, you don't have a tumor, you don't have bone disease, you don't have degenerative disc, but you've got severe muscle spasm. Now our goal is to get you back to normal and then do a structural fingerprint exam on you so we can see what the biomechanics are and what caused this antalgia in the first place. So that's what that Atlas operating system allows you to do. <clears throat> this, uh, I, and I promise last question, this one is of mine. That young man that, that came in the two and a half years in, was he in an auto accident or was there something that happened to him or do you know? No, it wasn't a traumatic injury. <clears throat> he explained it to me. He was doing something and he, <clears throat> he went into antalgia but I don't remember what it was. It wasn't anything that really was gripping. Wow, wow. I don't know how you go two and a half years without addressing it. That's what shocked me. He he lived in Louisiana, so maybe that's what they do in Louisiana. <laughs> Boy, but his I don't posture, know. if your picture was of him standing as straight as he could and picking up his head the best that he could. Boy, that was the best. Uh, that's he a looked a lot show. worse than that walking yeah. through our hallway. I just felt horrible for the guy. So I'm going to go out now and have Michelle give him a call and find out what happened. So I'll report back. Yeah. Well, yeah, and then call your, your senator. Is that who it is? Yeah, give Senator Amador a call. Find out what what he's thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Should be fun. Must have, must have gotten the paper as well. Yeah, well, that was a goal for him to be able to see it. And obviously, he did. <laughs> yeah, I understand. All right, Dr. Mag, close us out, and we'll uh, we'll get back together next week. Go ahead. Okay, Stephen, thank you, and Foot Levelers, thank you, and Docs, all of you who attend, thank you. This is, uh, in my opinion, the biggest mission that we've been on, and the world is at a point where they need us. So we just need to sharpen our axe, improve what we do, and do a great job when the people come in. And boy. 
couldn't be more rewarding. So thanks for attending and uh, have a great week. We'll talk next week. Bye-bye.